This week we've got a video that will cover Wubi. If you've ever been curious about Linux or Ubuntu but not been very sure about the whole installation process, if you still don't feel very sure about how to install it or messing around with your partitions, if you want to set up a dual boot, Wubi is a great solution for you. Wubi is a standalone file that you can download uh, to install Ubuntu within Windows or you can just use the built-in Wubi that comes with the Ubuntu Live CD. As with the Live CD, there's no need to go out and download the standalone client. What does Wubi do? Wubi simply installs Ubuntu as a dual boot on your system, but it doesn't manipulate the partitions. It just uses free space on your hard drive. It also doesn't monkey around with any special drivers. Um, it doesn't force you to make some of the the kind of confusing changes that you may have to bump into when you install Ubuntu for the first time. One of the nice features of Wubi is basically it installs Ubuntu as if it was a Windows program. So later if you decide you want to free up that, that hard drive space, you simply boot into Windows, go to the Add Remove Programs dialog, and simply choose Ubuntu and uninstall it, just as if it was a Windows program. So it's pretty handy. So let's go ahead and jump into how to do that. If you have the live CD, Go ahead and stick it in the computer now. I'm going to go ahead and mount the ISO that I have for VirtualBox. I am using a Windows 7 install that I have used in a previous video for setting up a dual boot. So in this video, we'll be continuing that and actually setting up a third boot option using Wubi. So we'll break. I'll go ahead and mount the CD. If you're following along, go ahead and stick the live CD in, in your drive, and we'll be right back. If you've placed the live CD within your CD or DVD drive, or if you've mounted the live ISO or however you're going about this, you may notice the autoplay box will pop up. If that's the case, just go ahead and select Run Wubi. If you do not see the auto run box, simply go to My Computer and you'll select the CD drive and double click it. Select Yes, give it permission to run from the UAC from Windows 7, and you'll be greeted with the Ubuntu menu. From here, you can click Demo and Full Installation. And what will happen is basically just reboot your machine with the disk and the drive, and you'll boot into the live CD as we've covered in previous videos. What we want to do is install inside Windows. After you select Install Within Windows, you'll be greeted with this screen. This screen, you have several options you can pick. We can select a different drive if we have more than one partition or more than one drive installed that Windows can see. It will also see it here. We can change the installation size. Now, the lowest we can go is 5 gigabytes. The highest is 7 in my situation because um, I have a rather small VirtualBox drive set up that dynamically expands as you install software. That is not the case with a physical hard drive. So you'll only want to select a installation size that you have free space for. We're going to go language. You can change your language and you can enter your username and password. If you need accessibility options, you can click the accessibility button. You can select the options that you'd like to have. If you do not need any of those options, you can go ahead and proceed with the install. Wubi is a very handy utility, especially if you're not comfortable with messing around with partitions. If, uh, if maybe the Ubuntu installer intimidates you, then Wubi is, is an easy way to go. It does accomplish a dual boot system with very minimal trouble. After you do the install, you may have to run a check disk on your Windows 7 partition uh, just to verify the integrity of it. If that's the case, just go ahead and run it. shouldn't be any big deal. It will take a little time to finish depending on your hard drive size, but overall, you shouldn't have any problems. So as this installs, there's not much we can do from this point forward. It's pretty much a waiting game. Uh, we just kind of set tight, and we will watch as Wubi progresses through its installation. There's not many options you'll select through here. You'll just kind of let it do its thing. Uh, once it's done, we will be able to reboot into Ubuntu. And so we'll go ahead and skip forward to the point where we can interact with this once again. All right, once Wubi is done copying the files over, it'll ask you to reboot now, or you can manually reboot later. If you would like to continue the setup after you check your email or something of that nature, you can leave it set at I want to reboot later. I'll go ahead and select reboot now. For the sake of the video, we'll click Finish, and Windows will, of course, reboot the computer. Now that we've rebooted, we'll go ahead and launch our Windows 7. As I mentioned earlier, I've already set up a dual boot with this machine. 
So we'll go ahead and just kick off our Windows 7 installer for Weavey. At the boot manager, we want to go ahead and click Ubuntu, completing the Ubuntu installation. And you'll notice that instead of actually seeing the usual boot screen here, asking whether you want to try or install Ubuntu, we're just greeted with an installation box. And you can follow the, the status of this. From this point forward, the installation is pretty well you know, by the books, nothing crazy. Uh, you've already pretty much skipped the parts where you set up your username, your password, the partitioning, uh, whether you'd like to dual boot or use the entire drive. All that information was already selected through Wubi. When you set that up, so now we pretty much just let it do its thing. And it will work through the installation. You'll notice we do get a slideshow just as if you were using the, the live CD. And you can click through this if you like, if you've never used Ubuntu before, and if this is your first experiment with Ubuntu. Uh, you can see what it's got under the hood for you. What you can look forward to using once you get inside the operating system after it's installed. But from this point forward it's pretty much the same exact process of the installation that you would see if you were actually using the live CD and doing a just straight installation. So we'll go ahead and fast forward through this. There's no need to step through this. If you've never seen the installation you can check out one of our other videos where we install Ubuntu and you can follow through that. So we'll fast forward and jump back in as soon as we can. At the end of the installation process, the computer will automatically reboot. Uh, you're seeing this grub screen because, like I mentioned earlier, I had previously set up an Ubuntu 11.10 install using the live CD. So we'll select the Windows 7 option. This will take us to the Windows Boot Manager where you see we have an Ubuntu menu entry. You select Ubuntu and it will now take you to a grub bootloader screen. You'll notice here I've had a failed attempt earlier at setting this up so that's why I have kind of double the Ubuntu entries. So I'll just select the top Ubuntu entry. And as you can see we have the colored screen there. It's not really a black, it's not really kind of a purplish color. But once we see the Ubuntu boot screen we know we're doing good. So this will continue to load and as it loads we will eventually be brought to our working desktop. All right, now we'll go ahead and we'll log in using the password that we picked when we were setting up our Ubuntu installation from within Windows using Wubi. And here we go. We now have a fully functional Ubuntu 11.10 operating system set up that we installed from within Windows using Wubi. Now do be sure to check out our next video as we will discuss how to remove this Ubuntu installation should we decide that we no longer need it or want it or if we need to free up disk space. As always, feel free to check out our website at TeggySmarts.com. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and look me up on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash techiesmarts. As always, have a great day, and we'll see you next time.